May 4th, 1699. I, Lemuel Gulliver, write down these thoughts as I prepare to embark upon a voyage of uncertain future. My travels may prove to be danger-filled. Perhaps they will prove to be my end. My reasons for going are painful, yet simple. There is no work to be found here, and my family is in need. Food and clothing are nothing to a rich man, but to a poor man, they are constant dreams. I leave today to make those dreams come true. I set sail with but one goal in mind, to return with a fortune. My family shall never go hungry again. I am resolute. I shall return a rich man or die in the attempt. I knew not where my crewmates were, nor did I know where I was. Exhausted, I chose to sleep, deciding that all else could wait till the morrow. Waking, I discovered that I was alive, that I could not move, and that I was not alone. Something or someone was moving up along the course of my body towards my face. <laughs> Who goes there? Hello, I say. I distinctly made clear the sounds of building just a few inches from my head. But who were the carpenters? And who, what was the tiny creature that stabbed at my nose with an arrow the size of a splinter? Tiny ropes securing my hair were curiously severed. My head freed to turn and see my captor. I am Flimna, treasurer of Lilliput, and second only to his royal highness, the king. I am Gulliver, a friend, cast here by shipwreck. You are no friend to Lilliput. You are a giant sent from Lefusco to destroy our lands. Lefusco? I come from England. I've never heard of Lefusco. And I have never heard of England. Have you, Admiral Bogolam? I have sailed the seas of the world. I have explored the lands that touch the oceans and never crossed such a place. There is no England. Impossible. I disagree. You are in no position to disagree. You are but a giant from Blafusco who I have captured. We have captured, Treasurer Flimna. We. And don't forget it. I, we, no matter. What is important is that a Blafuscan giant's death shall fare well in the eyes of his majesty. I shall be rewarded. We shall be rewarded. Double U-E. We, Flimnap. 
Oh, if you insist, I insist. Whatever. Archers, draw your bows. Wait. On command of the king, hold your arrows. This giant shall not be killed. He shall be taken to the king. Relrisal, you continue to plague me. Me too. Plaguing you, both of you, Flimnap and Bulgalam, is a task I take pleasure in. However, it is not a task, but a delight to plague those disloyal to the king. Upon orders of the king, make preparations to move the Man Mountain to the royal prison. Saul wins the moment, but there will come a time when we shall do away with him, and perhaps even that pudding head king as well. We? You mean you? I mean we. You will do as I say, Bolgalam. <laughs> My hopes for gaining a fortune may have been dashed on the rocks along with my ship. For I truly found myself a captive in a strange world known as Lilliput. They were but the size of my thumb, but my life was completely in their tiny little hands. I was taken to the royal prison, a journey that took the Lilliputians the better part of two and a half days, a distance I could have walked in a little over 20 minutes, were I allowed to stand and walk as Man Mountain. <laughs> I just wished we'd have swelled before we wowed. But, oh, 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 no, no, oh, no. Hi, oh, it's dark. Hmm? Oh, oh, that was a very short night, wasn't it? Oh, oh, so you're the giant from Blesusku. <laughs> I imagine that your parents were quite tall. No. No? <laughs> then I suppose that mine was very short. I mean, no, I am not the giant from Blavosku. Oh, well, then, there, that explains it. Explains what? Well, I really don't know. I've forgotten the question. Please be careful, Your Majesty. The giant is lying. He has been sent by Blavosku to destroy us. Your Majesty, I am not from Blavosku. Then you're not a big Indian? What is a big Indian? Why, a Blavoskan, of course. If you break your egg by cracking the big end, you're a big Indian. <laughs> we Lilliputians break the little ends first. Therefore, we are little Indians. That's it, isn't it? Yes, Your Majesty. That explains it. <laughs> oh, it does. <laughs> I knew it explained something. Are you telling me that you are at war with Blufusku over the proper way to crack an egg? Have been for 600 years. I can't believe it. It would seem to me that a compromise could have ended this war long ago. Simply get the people of Lilliput and Blafusku together and agree to crack your eggs in the middle. Oh, but we attempted such a compromise some three generations back. However, no one could agree as to which side of the middle, the right middle or the left middle, was the proper and official way. 
I'm afraid that it resulted in the infamous meddlesome middle muddle that took the lives of some 11,000 people. No, I'm afraid that this will go on until Blefuscu admits that they are wrong. <laughs> or chickens stop laying eggs. That's it, Blimnap! Your Highness. Tell my corps of chicken engineers to create a new breed of chicken that lays something other than eggs. What would your highness suggest as an alternative? Muffins! That explains it! <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt, your majesty, but I demand to be freed from these chains. I am the king! I uh, could do that. He is a threat. I say he should be slain. Oh, I could do that, too. <laughs> oh, my, a king is busy. Your majesty, may I suggest that the Man Mountain be searched? Perhaps he carries a document from the King of Lefusco that will prove he is in league with our enemies. Excellent idea, Slimnap. Almost as good as my muffins. Will you submit to such a search, Man Mountain? Of course. I have nothing to hide. Oh, and what might this be? That, Your Majesty, is a snuff box. Oh, and uh, that? This is my pistol. What does it do, Giant? I'd best not demonstrate this item. No? You said that you had nothing to hide. Well, if you insist. Oh, 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 my. Man Mountain, how can I repay you? You can set me free of these chains, Majesty. Hmm. I shall discuss that with the Assembly at once. What else? Well, I am fearfully hungry, Your Majesty. Food! Quickly, quickly! If I were you, I would stay away from the eggs. Believe me, they've made my life miserable. I had taken a liking to these tiny people and their amusing little king. And I believe that they were slowly beginning to trust me. They seem to be a good people. With the exception of Flimnap and his dangerous little friend, Admiral Bolgalam. But I couldn't help but wonder about my fate. Would the king and his assembly allow me my freedom? And if they did, would I ever be able to find my way back to England? And I vote to slay the Man Mountain. Why, the expense of feeding him alone would surely drive Lilliput into famine. Oh, wow. Hey, listen, that's a good point. What say you, Minister Reldressal? Ah, but your majesty, we mustn't overlook the benefit of such a behemoth. Man Mountain can aid the citizens of Lilliput in their building, their fishing, their farming. With his size and strength, he can do the work of thousands of us. <laughs> oh, now, that's a good point, too. As usual, the king's only point is on the top of his head. I propose that we free Man Mountain if he agrees to accept a list of articles we draw up governing his actions. And if he violates any one of these articles, he shall be disposed of. I agree! <laughs> I, I think that I do, anyway. What do you think? I think that disposing of a silly nilly king is one thing, but disposing of such a king who has a giant as a friend is quite another. Man Mountain shall not venture into the main city without consent and not before he gives the citizens two hours' warning in which to hide from his giant footsteps. That Man Mountain shall help the citizens in their work. That he shall not at any time take a Lilliputian into his hands without their consent. And if he so obeys these rules, he shall be rewarded with his freedom and a daily allowance of food and drink sufficient for the support of 1,727 Lilliputian citizens. 1,728! 
It's my favorite number, you know. And you, my dear, as queen, do you agree with these articles? He had just better not pick up too much dust when he walks. Oh, dust is terrible for my hair. Add that to the list. And he had better not disturb my splendiferous being in any way, shape, or manner. I simply won't have that, do you hear? Put it on the list, put it down. And so, Man Mountain, do you accept the list of articles? I do, Your Majesty. Launch other plans. I leave for Blafusku this night. I am certain that they will assist me in doing away with this man mountain. <laughs> I truly enjoyed helping the Lilliputian. Everything was going well for me in Lilliput. Then the black cloud of Flimnap settled down over my head. Man Mountain, further out in the sea, beyond the far edge of the coast, you will find a much larger catch. The catch here is quite large enough. You agreed to the articles, Man Mountain. You must do as Lilliput commands. Now go. Say hello to the Blafusku Navy troublesome giant and say goodbye to life itself. <laughs> the water was soon too deep for walking. I was forced to swim. Even though I could swim well, I still had the feeling that I was in over my head. fishing net coiled around me like a snake, tangling my body and pulling me towards the bottom of the sea. I tried to stop him from going out into deeper waters, Your Majesty, but he refused to heed my warnings. I fear he was drowned. The catch was unusually large today, Your Majesty. <laughs> the entire Blasfusku Navy trussed up like fish for the marketplace. Oh, what a day for Lilliput! What a day for me! Man Mountain was simply lucky, in my opinion. Yes? Well, then, perhaps, Admiral, you should say that some of his luck rubs off on you. For he has done in one afternoon what you and your entire fleet have failed to do in years. <laughs> <laughs> what is to be done with the Blafuscan prisoners? Oh, well, they are to be done away with immediately. Oh, yes, even sooner than that. <laughs> What does that mean, Your Majesty? Done away with? Yes. Well, it means, uh, 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 done away with, of course. When something or someone pesters me, I have them done away with. I don't know what is done with them, but whoop, they are done away with. I suggest that you set them free. They will return to Blafusku with the message that the king of Lilliput, a benevolent king, should never be dallied with again. Benevolent? Hmm. I have always wanted to be benevolent, you know. So be it! Deal, Man 
mountain. I, a most benevolent king, do dub thee. Oh well, dub dub. <laughs> you, Man Mountain, are a hero and shall receive the reward of a hero. Bring on the reward. <laughs> He has ridiculed me. Mark my words, I am no one's fool. Today, my dear friend, you are everyone's fool. But tomorrow is a new day, and I have a new way to rid ourselves of Man Mountain. I was treated like a hero. All of Lilliput turned out to make my every wish come true. My whole stay with the Lilliputians had become a dream. I had found the fortune I had set out to find. I was living a life of luxury, the kind I'd only read of in books before. Still, with all of this, I could only think of being home with my family. Soon, I would discover that my dream was to become a nightmare. Man Mountain, quickly, we need you. The Royal Palace, it's on. Stand aside. Run, Man Mountain, run. Run into our trap. save the palace and the queen, I will repair all that I've damaged, Your Majesty. Well, there, you see, he will fix all. Let us not forget that he did save the palace and the queen. I, of course, would be the last to condemn the actions of such a hero. However, I feel I must point out certain violations. Oh, my, yes, oh, violations. Unhappily, yes, Your Majesty, you see, Man Mountain promised not to come into the city without consent, and he did. He further promised to give two hours notice before traveling, and he did not. He swore that he would not pick up any of our citizens without their consent, and I do believe he picked up our beloved queen in such a manner. And lastly, and perhaps the most damaging violation considering the widely recognized beauty of our queen, I fear that her splendiferous being has been altered somewhat by his actions. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh my, what have you to say now, Man Mountain? I acted as I did out of affection for Lilliput. A curious way to display affection, smashing houses. And the cause of the fire more curious still, wouldn't you say, Flimnap? And now he accuses me of starting the fire. Your Majesty, surely there is no doubt as to my loyalty to Lilliput? There is no doubt at all in my mind as to where your loyalties lie. 
Must I stand for this, your majesty? Oh, oh, oh my goodness, stand for it. Oh, I, I don't know. I suppose you could sit if you wish. <laughs> oh, I believe this calls for an emergency meeting of the assembly, Man Mountain. Yes, yes indeed, an emergency meeting. We must drop everything. Oh my goodness, oh, I didn't mean, oh, oh, summon the assembly. Man Mountain, you return to the prison and wait for our decision. And someone revive the queen. Oh my gosh, long live the queen. Well, Versal, why aren't you with the assembly? I sneaked away unnoticed. I come in true friendship, Man Mountain, but I fear I bring the worst of news. The assembly has voted unanimously, save my vote, against you. Why did you come here to tell me this, Reldrasal? Because our king, a truly good king, is easily swayed, my friend. Flimnap has convinced him that you should receive no further food from Lilliput, and that when you starve to death, that your skeleton shall remain as a monument to future invaders. I came to give you warning of this. You risked your life to come here. Why? Because you are a good man. And I rather look forward to seeing Flimnap's face when he comes here, only to find you gone. Go, and go now. I slipped into the sea and swam towards Blefuscu. I hoped that because I had persuaded the king to spare their fleet, they would offer me safe passage as I searched for England, wherever that might be. And so, Your Majesty, what do you think of my plan? England, eh? I doubt if I can help you find this England of yours. Besides, I have another plan in mind for you, Man Mountain. I shall allow you to live on one condition. You shall be blinded, and then guided by the generals of my army. You will be told what to do, and with your size and strength, you shall help us as we conquer and destroy Lilliput. What say you to that plan, Man Mountain, eh? Nothing? What say you, Flimnap? I think the plan to be excellent, my king. <laughs> <laughs> Stop him! Kill him if you must! I had been betrayed once again by Flimnap. With both Lilliput and Blefuscu pursuing me, I had nowhere to go but further out to sea. I had been spit up from the bottom of the sea by the whirlpool, to an island like no other, red water, blue sand, green clouds, and trees that stretched up to the heavens. This was nothing like Lilliput. In Lilliput, I was a giant. Here, even the blades of grass were several times my height. Here, I was a tiny Lilliputian. but spare me. <laughs> In Lilliput, I laughed at how small the jewels and gold were to me. Here, this giant laughs at a fortune he could carry beneath his fingernail. 
Climb on, Black Nut. Strange. Nothing is so great or so small other than by comparison. Why do you smile so, husband? Have you found a way to grind gold out of corn? Better. I found a splacknuck in the fields today. You've had too much sun. There are splacknucks all over the fields. <laughs> Not like this splacknuck. You brought it home. Ah! A good day to you, madam. What manner of splacknuck is that? One that looks and speaks as we do. Oh, Papa, he's adorable. May I have him? For the moment, Glundle Glitch, until I decide what is to be done with him. No, you don't. Papa gave little Grildrig to me, not you. Glundle Glitch called me her little Grildrig and pampered me like I was one of her toy dolls. They seem to be a very kind family, and for the moment, I was enjoying my stay with them. Gather round, good citizens. Good people of Brobdinab, I offer you a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. For the price of but one drollop apiece, you can witness a most wondrous sight. <laughs> a splacknuck. A splacknuck, the likes of which you have never seen. For one drollop, the splacknuck will entertain you all. Dance! Dance! Or I'll give you to the cat. Begun dancing. He'll dance me right into a fortune. <laughs> Get up, Splacknuck. Get up and dance. He's through dancing for now. Yes? And who dares tell me my business? I, Her Majesty's Minister, say that he is done. You, farmer. Bring your daughter and the Splacknook and follow me to the Queen. And make certain that he suffers no more harm, or you'll pay the price with your life. And the little oddity was being forced to endure great hardship by his taskmaster, this cruel farmer. He is mine to do with what I want, my Queen. As much as it pains me to hear of the farmer's ill treatment to the tiny creature, there is nothing I can do as long as it rightfully belongs to him. He was given to me. I would never harm him. My father gave Grildrick to me, Your Majesty. Only for a while, my queen. Besides, what does a child know? This involves finances. She seems to know that love is more valuable than money. If farmer... You were to set a price on this dancing splatnuck of yours. What would it be? I would consider parting with him for, shall we say, 1,000 drollops? Done. I will give you your price. No, I won't part with Grildrig. Be quiet, you whiny brat. Be silent or I'll sell you as well. Oh? And what price would you set for your daughter? Price? Well, if a father were ever to consider selling his own daughter, if, mind you, I would venture to say that uh, 2,000 drollops would be a fair asking price. Done. You will be paid all your drollops at once. Your daughter will become a ward of my court, and I will raise her as my own. As for you, father, you would serve yourself well never to come before my eyes again. I do not show pity to men who would even consider selling such a lovely child as your daughter. Take your drollops and leave my sight at once. Come, child. 
Let's you and I go show your Rildrig to the king. I think it's about time he met his new daughter. Watch this, my king. <laughs> your favorite little man will make you laugh with this. King, what can your favorite little man do to lighten your heart? <laughs> mm. oh. There is nothing that you can do. There is a hole in my life, and laughter cannot fill it. I need... I have what you need. This is Glumdalclitch. She is our daughter. Uh, how? What? I will explain later. No matter. This is what I needed. A daughter. And what does she bring with her? This is my Grimtree. And I love him with all my heart. Then we too shall love him as much as you. Good day, kind people. My. What do you say to that, my king? Well, I have never heard. It's amazing. <laughs> and now, sire, your favorite little man will help. Shh, shh. Go away for now. My daughter is showing me grill drink. Truly amazing. But nowhere as amazing as a new daughter. Oh, uh, watch this, my king. <laughs> Jester, away with you! But, but my, my king, I am your favorite little man. Away! Come, let us set his house near the window so that he can cry. Your Grildrig can cry by the window. Now, my daughter, let's all go for a walk in the garden and get acquainted. A wasp, the size of a flying elephant. has been dulled, but not mine. After that narrow escape, I was in need of some calm, peaceful relaxation. And since I had always found that kind of contentment while sailing, Glumdal Klitsch and the Queen had seen to it that the Royal Carpenter built a private ocean complete with my own sailing boat. Two thoughts occupied my mind as I sailed. The first, far more important, was how was I ever going to return to my England? I certainly couldn't sail across the seas in my tiny sailboat. Second thought was fixed on the jester. He thought of himself as the king's favorite little man, although he stood some 20 feet taller than I, and I feared that he resented my tiny intrusion into his world. difficulties with the jester had not even begun, however. I have a surprise for you, Father. 
I hope we aren't interrupting anything. Absolutely nothing. However, I doubt that you could give me a surprise as wonderful as hearing my new daughter call me father. What is it? The surprise is from Grildrig, really, but... I, too, have a surprise, my king. Silence, Jester. But, but, but... Enough! Now go away, Jester. He is grateful for your many favors and would like to play for you a melody he has composed himself. I'll show them all a surprise. Get him! Stop! Guards! Jester and that hairy ape of his were banished from the kingdom. To ease the shocking memory of my perils, I was given a solid gold ring to wear by Her Majesty and a sturdy new home by the king. In spite of it all, I was as unhappy as I had ever been in my life. I had all but given up hope of ever returning to a normal world. I resigned myself to forever remaining a tiny pet for the royal family of Brobding Nag. Grildrig, please come out and enjoy the view. Grildrig, is there nothing that I can do to make you happy? I'll go and pick some flowers for you. Perhaps that will help. I knew that I was in the sea. I just hoped that my new home wouldn't leak and take me to the bottom with it. Grab it by the hand, hold on top. Pick it up with your hands. I was safe from the sea, but what manner of giant waited outside remained to be seen. Welcome aboard, mate. You... You're not giants. Giants? Ha, ha, ha. No, we ain't giants. But we're big enough to take care of the likes of you. Ha, 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 ha. What do you plan on doing with me? First, I plan on taking that gold collar of yours. And I wager a gentleman like yourself has more in the way of riches on him. Then I plan on using you as shark bait. <laughs> I've gone through too much to lose my fortune to the likes of you, sir. Get him! What be your plans now, mate? <laughs>
Excuse me, fisherman, but what might the name of this strange new world be? I've never heard England referred to as a strange new world, my boy. England. I'm home. These words are the last entry in my log. I have returned, as I said I would, with a fortune. One day I will sit back and ponder the memories of my adventures. I have traveled the world to find this fortune. And yet, looking around me at this moment, I find my fortune surrounding me. I was a wealthy man before I ever left. Thank you.